Hi again, Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. This video is about the layer tool. Now, I'm, I'm excited to show you this because the layer tool is one of those things in this software that makes it so powerful that there's so many things you can do with it. I'm not sure we'll be able to cover it all in this video, but at least you'll get an overview how the layer tool can be used. So let's grab one first of all. We can do that a couple of different ways. We can go to the insert menu up here. Uh, under advanced, we can click on that and choose the layer tool. Now, just because it's under the advanced tools, don't think that it's difficult to use. It just means that it does advanced things, but it's actually quite easy to use. Another way to grab the layer tool is to scroll down in the toolbox and go down to the advanced section and grab the layer tool here. Either way, you just draw a box onto the canvas and that's a layer. Let's talk about a little bit what a layer is. First of all, it's a very simple object in a way. It's just a container that you can put objects in that um, will be part of your website. And all of these objects will be inside the same container. Now, you may think at first glance, what's the purpose of that? But as we move on, you'll see there's a great advantage to using a layer and containing uh, several objects in it. A layer can contain anything from text, uh, video, images, forms, just about anything you can put on a website, you can put inside a layer. In fact, we'll do that. I have some text here, and we're going to drag it and drop it inside the layer here. And as you can see, the text now becomes part of that container. So when I move the layer around, the text goes with it. I have some other objects here. In fact, here are four images. I'm going to select all of them by dragging over all four of these and moving them into the layer. Now, you'll notice that when I put them in the layer, it lights up. And it's not until you see that blue highlight that an object is inside the layer. So we want to make sure we get it all the way in. So let's do that. We're going to put the, some objects in here. Let's bring this down here and work with this layer. A layer also has its own attributes, much like a web page does. You'll notice that if you double click on it and bring up the layer properties, you can change the style of the layer. It can have a background of its own, a solid color or an image, or just like a page, you can change these styles. It can even have borders of just about any width and any radius and any color, any style. The border can even be a dotted border, whatever. So a layer can have its own look. It could even be transparent if you want it to, and there's purpose behind that. Also, it could have shadows and have special effects. We can add events to layers. And again, I'm not going into what events do exactly here. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but uh, a layer can have its own events as well as, as its own animation attributes. But for now, we're going to keep this simple and quick so you can see what layers do. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of this background so you can see it a little bit better. So I double clicked on it. I'm going to go to style and let's change this background to something a little bit darker so it's easier for you to see in the video. So now we have a layer with kind of a darker gray background. I'm going to double click again and bring up those layer properties because what we're going to be working with here are these attributes about the layer. This is actually where the power of the layer really comes in handy. There's different kinds of layers in different modes, and I'm going to show you how that works. Without adjusting any of this, our layer is pretty simple. It's just basically a box or a container full of objects that doesn't do much until we affect its location and size attributes and even the alignment. To show you the distinction, I'm going to do nothing here and just show you what happens when we preview this page. You'll see that there really isn't any particular thing that's different about it, except that we just have some objects inside a gray box called a layer doesn't do much of anything right now, does it? Let's go and play with some of these attributes. For starters, I'm going to show you something that's called relative horizontal sizing. Now, you can play with these and do what you want, but I'm just going to show you in a brief overview what some of this does. By changing this one thing, relative horizontal sizing, and changing the alignment to center, and I'm clicking OK, I'm going to stretch this layer all the way beyond the actual canvas right here. This is the edge of the page. This is where the ruler is. And just by doing those few things, watch what I've done with the layer. I'm going to click F5 and preview it again in a browser. What I've basically done is I've created a layer that is relative in sizing to the browser window. You can see how these things move when the rest of the content of the page doesn't. This is actually a really important thing to understand when you're working with responsive design. In other words, websites that respond to the size of a browser. So by making this relative, I've just made this responsive to whatever size the user's browser is, this layer will continue to be across that position because it stretches and moves or responds to the browser. 
Now that's just the beginning. Uh, that's one thing you can do with the layer, but we're going to do so many other things now. It should be pretty interesting. We just use the default mode, by the way. The default mode does what we just what we just demonstrated in creating relative sizing, and we can do that vertically as well, and we can mess with these. You can play around and see what those do. But I'd like to move on to some of the other things that the layer tool can do. Let's talk about a sticky layer. When you create a layer that is called sticky, what it does is it sticks to a particular position no matter where you scroll in the page. I'll show you what I mean. So here we have this layer at the top of the page that's now a sticky layer. Here's what that means. Again, we're going to preview by clicking F5. And watch what happens when I scroll down the page. Notice that the layer sticks to that position in the browser. So again, it's relative or responsive to where the browser is. If I scroll up, it will stick to its position. A very cool feature that would be great for, say, your navigation. That's what the sticky layer does. Again, let's move on. I'll double click on it and let's try something else. And by the way, I could have changed the orientation of where it stuck. I had it stick to the top left. And you can change those positions right here if you want to. And how fast it responds, you'll notice it kind of had a little bit of animation to it. I could slow that down or speed that up by changing this delay time. Let's move on to the next one. The header and footer I'm going to show you in another video because version 10 of 90 Second Website Builder has special header footer layer tools now, and we'll talk about that elsewhere. Let's look at the docking layer. This is also very, very handy, and it's very similar. So this is where we want our layer to always dock into a particular position. The best way to see this is to just basically demonstrate it. So we're, I'm going to set it to dock at the top of the page, for example. So it's going to dock at the top. Well, what does that mean? Well, it's very similar to what we just did. I'm going to click F5. And again, when I scroll, it's always staying on top. There's not as much animation. You see, it doesn't respond. It actually stays put. It stays docked into position. So this would be great for a website or a web page where you needed the uh, top part of your web page to never move, for example, navigation or contact information, and you wanted the rest of the page to be scrollable, you can dock your layer. Again, I happen to choose the top position to dock it in, and there are other ways and other places you can do that. So let's look at some other ones. So again, we're going to double click on the layer, and we chose to dock that layer on top. We could have docked it in, in a number of different positions. If we, could, if we could even fill the page with the layer if we wanted to, and it would stay put. And the floating layer is also another one you can experiment with. You'll see how that works. I want to move on to the modal layer. This is very unique. If you're not uh, sure what a modal is, a modal is a spe specific kind of window that appears on top of a web page and then has to be closed by the user. So the layer tool allows you to create these great modal windows. If you don't know what a modal is, let me show you. Now in this case, it's going to be a pretty big one because I have a wide layer. So let's Let's narrow this down a little bit, down like this. Make this be our modal. Here's what a modal is. Whenever you open up a page and you see this kind of a window that has to be closed to bring the rest of the page in focus, this is called a modal. So you can imagine how you could design this modal. So let's close it and you'll see now the rest of the page is displayed. So maybe a better modal might be something that's more uh, squarish. In fact, let's, let's take these objects here. I'm multiple selecting them and putting them down like this. Let's make this more of a square kind of a layer and do this. And just for fun, let's uh, change the color of it. And watch what happens when we display this as a modal layer. It always goes into this position and does not allow us access to the website until the user closes that modal window. So that could be an alert of some kind or maybe a sign up form before they go into the page. But here's a close button so the user can get to the page. That's a modal and layers allow you to create modals. Let's do something else now that's also kind of fun. Besides a modal layer, you can also create what's called a panel layer. Now, a panel layer, you're not going to be able to see any difference just by me selecting panel layer, because a panel layer is a special kind of layer that works with events. An event is something that you would create for your website that triggers an action. So, for example, I know this is getting a little bit long and a little bit technical, but if this is so cool, I want to show you how it works. I'm going to use the panel layer, and I'm going to have it push left with a slide, 
and a duration of 200. Now I know you don't know what any of that looks like yet or what that means, but you will in a minute. So I'm going to close this. And what I did was I created an event because panel layers only work with events. Let me show you what an event is. I basically took this object, which is just an image, a red button, and I double clicked on it. I went to events and I created this event that says, whenever this button is clicked, show layer one. It was real easy to do. And if you want to see how to create an event, you can do that. Watch the events videos. But I wanted to have this layer show when this button is clicked. So that's all I did. Very, very easy to do. Click OK. So now when we test this, what will happen is when we click this button, it'll trigger the event of showing the panel layer. I'm going to go F5. Now the panel layer by default is invisible. It will never show until an event is triggered. That's why I had to make an event button. Well, and, and the event can be triggered by anything. It doesn't have to be a button or an image. You could be clicking on some text or whatever. But in this case, to make it simple, I made a button. Now, when I click on this event or this button, here's my panel layer. So you see that it did push, and it pushed a certain way, a certain direction, and at a certain speed. That's what all those attributes were about. Let's go look at them again. So double click on this. What I said about this panel layer was I wanted it to push, I wanted it to come from the left, I wanted it to slide, and the easing was linear. This is the style of sliding, and there's just too many to go over here, so we'll leave it at that for now. How fast I want that to happen can be adjusted here, or how slow I want it to be. I'll change that a little bit. Instead of push, we could do what's called an overlay, and I'll show you the difference. This time when we press push, F5 to preview, and I trigger the event. Instead of pushing the content, what's going to happen, it's going to overlay the content. So let's try that. And you'll see that this panel layer now comes on top of the content. That's what the panel layer does. Just remember that your panel layer will only work with events. But if you learn to use those, you can do some very powerful things. So the video is getting too long, but I want you to know that using layers is a really, really powerful thing to do. And in fact, before we go, let me show you a good use of layers in my own website. This is the website for 90 Second Website Builder. And this is the sort of behind the scenes of the canvas. Here I've used several layers. This is a layer. Uh, this top button is a layer for my na navigation, and so is this banner. I use this as a layer. This is ba basically just a simple layer. I'll show you the style of it here. There's the color that I wanted, and here it is a relative horizontal sizing, which, which means it fills the page all the way across the top. I use this default style of layer all the time. So you've got one here that's kind of black and then this bluish one. I've also got a layer here where I've got my opt-in form. I've got another layer down here where I've got some uh, where I've got a slider or a carousel tool and I've also got some layers down here for my footer and all this. So if you were to preview this page which is basically the home page of 90 Second Website Builder, you can see that I, des I designed all of this mostly with layers. There's a layer here, layer here, and by doing that, when the user stretches their browser by having things centered and having it relative, you can see that it makes the site look much better, much more up to date, more modern. Here inside this layer, I have this carousel tool that's showing some images. And down here, I have this layer that's got the uh, ordering button and links. And then here's my footer with different navigation. All of these are built on the layer tool. So one of the things you could get out of this video, first of all, and I'm trying to speed it along because there's a lot to say about layers, is that you can actually build your website basically starting with some good backgrounds and then start with a layer tool and start to lay your website out in terms of what can you put in a layer and how can you use the power of the layer tool. So hopefully that will help you get started and take your website building up just one more notch of professionalism and add some really, really cool effects to your web page with 90 Second Website Builder.